Hey guys, I quickly want to give you an update on my uh, Robinhood app portfolio. Um, so real quick here, if you are looking at a small screen, go ahead and hit full screen and it should fill up your phone or your tablet. If you are, um, if you have anything of value, you find anything of value in this video, please hit the like button. That way I can maybe get up to six viewers instead of my normal five. Um, but I appreciate the five people that do watch. I do. Um, but I'd like to maybe get to ten one day. Maybe, hopefully, maybe next year. We'll see. But um, there should be a lot of information here for you. If you're a, a dividend investor, if you're an option weekly option investor, you sell covered calls, there should be information here. I, I learned so much from watching other people's videos. I mean, I, I mean, most of it you know because if you watch a lot of videos, a lot of it's just repeat information. You know, I didn't realize there's no thumbnail here, here to make you like, oh, look at the cool thumbnail. You know, but I don't know what that does for people, but apparently the thumbnail is really important to anybody that wants to look at a video, but I don't really get that. But So I'm sorry, I do not have a thumbnail, and I really think it's stupid that, to put your face on the picture and try to get somebody to look at your video. And it works. <laughs> that's, what's even, that's what's even crazier about it, is it works. Um, but real quick here, so um, we're going to go over my, uh, my portfolio real fast, show you what stocks I'm holding. Um, I rotated out of a few, just... Um, happens sometimes your stocks options get called or um, or uh, strike prices get met and so um, I'm rotating back into a few but I'm, uh, some of them I have on my Charles Schwab account and I don't have on my uh, on my Robinhood account but we'll go over these real fast here and what I'm currently holding um, you know people talk about the ride or die stocks and all that kind of crap it's a it's a vehicle you don't fall in love with your investment vehicles it's there to help you get to make money. If if you, and I watch this guy all the time, and he, he has some good information and stuff. Sometimes he really tries to just get him to, just to get you to uh, to pay his monthly subscription price. So he doesn't even tell you all his information in his video. You have to get you have to have a subscription to get his stock list, which is stupid as heck because it's just all aristocrat stocks mostly. We can look those up. But here, I'm going to go over information for you. Kinder Morgan, this is a weekly option stock. It's a midstream company, uh, midstream energy company. Um, you know, I do sell weekly options on this, sometimes uh, two weeks on one position. Um, Coca-Cola, this is a, so I rotated out of Pfizer. I want to be in Pfizer, but I just haven't uh, picked back up into it. I think I'm just going to draw back. I do have a put in my... Uh, couple of puts in my Charles Schwab account for Pfizer, but I rotate into Coca-Cola. Usually if I can get a, a large amount of money together, because I usually don't have stocks up in the $50 range because I just buy positions, you know, and that's $5,000 to get a position of Coca-Cola roughly. So I had the money, so I figured I would pick up another position of Coca-Cola. I have one in my Charles Schwab as well. This is a weekly option. It pays really good weekly options. I, again, I try to sell, stay out of the money, so I stay at two to three deviations above on the weekly options and sometimes if it doesn't make sense I don't sell it or if I uh, I don't sell my option or if I have to um, do a two week to get the strike price I want for example if if it was that I wanted to sell, right now if I wanted to sell the 50 and the 50 is only paying one cent I wouldn't do that or two cents it's not worth the risk so I would go to the two week and look at the 50 to 50 50 50 or 51 in between and I would see what that pays. And if it pays enough to where I thought it was worth the risk, you know, 30 or $40, I would do that. And if, if the strike price is met, I mean, that's a good thing. You're making money. You're making money on the option, making money on the dividend, and you're making money by hitting the strike price. And again, you could roll it over. It's super simple. You know, you don't have to lose your stock because your strike price is met. I mean, most cases, the price will come back down. It just fluctuates in up and down waves. So you, again, you can roll it over. Um, Alteria Group. I have a position, two positions here actually, and so this is another one where I was able to uh, put a full, I had enough money to put a full position together, and so, and um, this pays very good uh, weekly options as well. That's why I landed it on another position of Alteria Group. Mo um, Dow. I have two positions. One here in Charles Schwab. Or I'm, I'm sorry, one here in my Robinhood app. It's a very, very, very good weekly option stock. I wish I actually had more. Um, sometimes it moves so much. Dow moves so much, it reminds me of a triple-weighted stock. That's how much it moves. And let's see if we can get an idea here. 
so there's there's a month three months so that's the recovery off the bottom it's just choppy i mean it's just a choppy 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 stock and it moves up and down two or three dollars a day sometimes the stock moves and um you know so uh you can see the drop there this is a spinoff dow's a spinoff of uh um, I forgot the other half of the company, but it's a spinoff of another chemical company, and they spun off this division um, a few years ago. MetLife. I have two positions, AIG and MetLife. I both own both of these insurance company. One position here in my Robinhood, a very, very good weekly option stock. And it is pretty choppy as well. Um, for some reason, the... Uh, the insurance company stocks had a huge run up there. You can um, actually there it is right there. Had a huge run up there last week. It was just nuts. And maybe it was two weeks ago, but it was just a while back. There's the year on MetLife. A very very good weekly option stock. I mean, lots of high premiums. Kraft Foods. This is a new one. I rotated into with added money and dividends and picking a premium and. Uh, I think uh, something I rotated out of maybe an AIG. Um, the reason I was kind of, it's a weekly option stock. The reason, you know, I wasn't necessarily excited about it. It does pay a dividend. It's around 4%, I think. Another thing, Robin, can they please, I mean, literally, I realize the dividends aren't going to be necessarily accurate all the time because stocks go up and down. But literally, Robinhood will show you a dividend. That is from two years ago, and they'll have a dividend yield there from the last time they paid dividends. It's just horrible. If they're not paying dividends, it should say zero, Robin Hood. If they are not paying dividends, if they halted their dividends, it should say zero. I mean, could Robin Hood please at least try to get some information right on their app? I mean, whatever you do, do not use the Robin Hood app for any type of research. Absolutely horrible. Uh, AIG, very good weekly option stock. I think I own two positions, one here and one Charles Schwab. Uh, Main, uh, Main Street Capital, this is not an option stock. I got this at $24 price range. It's been running up. Um, this week it had a run up and then it kind of sold off a little bit uh, yesterday. It was up to almost 34 Let's see, uh, I thought it was. Uh, it was at thirty three ninety nine at one time, but it doesn't matter. Um, but it pays about a seven or eight percent dividend monthly, and that's the reason why I got it. And I got it at the twenty four dollar range, so I'm collecting that monthly dividend every month. AT and T. This used to be a better weekly option stock. For some reason, the uh, options in the last month or two. It really fizzed out. It used to be really good. Like literally, you could collect out of the money, collect twenty-five dollars a week per position, and now it's down to about five dollars a week. Um, I was going to buy more AT and T. Pays an awesome dividend, like seven or eight percent. So it's close to seven. It's right there. But that's I think that's wrong. I think it's actually above that, which is rarely the case in Robinhood. Usually Robinhood's showing a higher dividend than it's usually paying, not a lower one. Um, but I do sell, I, a lot of times on at and have to sell the two-week option to get a decent premium for being out of the money. Uh, Viacom CBS, I own four positions, two in here and two in Charles Schwab. It's a decent uh, weekly option stock. It does pay a dividend around 3 or 4%. Uh, BP, I have one position. This is one I'm way down on, I believe. No, I bought about the same price. Uh, that's way back in March, I think, or April. It's funny, it's still about the same. It's a decent weekly option stock. Uh, I would buy more of it. I just They cut their dividend in half, basically. Which I don't blame them, and the dividend was like 10%. And I think it's down to about 5 now. They just recently did that, I believe. And um, it really didn't affect the value of the stock, so that was definitely priced in. Usually when somebody cuts their dividend, it really drops. Um, HPQ, I have one position, it's a weekly option stock. EPD, I have three positions, two in here and one in Charles Schwab. 
and it is a weekly stock, option stock. I am not actually accurate when I tell you my position. Sometimes I'll tell you if I own them here, and sometimes I'll tell you if I own them in Charles Schwab. But I, I always tell you what I own here. So um, I believe I have two positions here. Yeah. And it's a weekly option stock, and it's a pretty good, pretty good uh, premium for a weekly option. Very good dividend. It's like eight percent. You know, uh, EPD is of um, a very good, uh, very good um, dividend stock, and I actually plan on probably buying more of it in the future. Uh, Key Bank. See, I bought Key at twelve oh seven, and I was t listening to some Benji. I listened to Benji's videos. And uh, I mean, I like Benji. I mean, he's kind of formative. He's really good at taking the uh, the thumbnail. He's way better at making videos than I am, that's for sure. But he just kind of talks about what he bought today. He doesn't really get a lot of information. It's very simple, you know. Very, I don't know. He gets ten thousand views a day. That's crazy on his on his videos. I'm like, man, I'm not learning nothing from his videos. But I do like Benji. I have learned things from Benji. I, he is not a necessarily an experienced investor. I think he watches my videos. He might be one of the five people, but um, but he does uh, he does talk about a lot of a lot of subjects and he does research them and he do, he makes good videos. I mean, but but it's, a lot of times it's very simple stuff. I really don't need to know what stock he bought that day. Yeah, I'd love to know more of what he's holding and why he's holding. But KeyBank is one of the ones he was. Not excited about him holding recently. And I can see why. He bought it up here. And and now you can see over the year here. KeyBank went down to under $10. And now he's holding KeyBank around right here. Um, you know, I have a position at KeyBank. And so what I... And I have... Actually, I think I have three positions at KeyBank. I think I have two here and one in uh, my Charles Schwab. Maybe I have four. And... Um, and the reason I own it, it does pay a good dividend. It's about 4 or 5%. Actually close to 6, according to Robin. And that might be incorrect. Um, but I sell the weekly options. I make way more off the weekly options than I do the dividends. And so, you know, when I can find a weekly option stock that isn't a dog, I want to own it. I don't think KeyBank's necessarily a dog. It's just like all these financials. They just are, have been pretty slow at recovering compared to other stocks. Um, but again, I'm I'm pulling down 30, 35, 40 percent return on these stocks because of uh, selling those weekly options and those dividends. A, G, and C. I just have one position. Um, I listened to uh, another guy's video who owns A, G, and C, and he's not that excited about it. He's owned it for a while. He was really excited about A, G, and C, but they have had dividend cuts since the uh, downturn here. Because they were at close to 10% when it was at $20. And now they're about 11%. And now it's around thirteen sixty. So they definitely cut their dividend. I've owned AG&C up here. And here and here and here and over here. Um, I wasn't owning it during the downturn, which was great. So I didn't feel so bad of buying it back. And then recently, it's a weekly option stock. So, you know, and I don't think it's necessarily a dog. But um, but if you're just buying agency to hold the dividend, I wouldn't own it. So that's just so, so. If you're just trying to collect that ten percent dividend, I believe that there's a good chance, just like he said, and I agree with him, that um, your stock, a good chance it's going to go down. As you can see, the five year, I guess it's kind of choppy, but um, agency was down to around fourteen eighty seven. And hey, look how fast it sold off, and that's a straight drop. In 1934, all the way down to nine dollars. So that's what's going to happen in a downturn. It's going to fall in half. Um, and so he was not excited about AGNC because of, it keeps cutting its dividends, which it's not going to pay a 21% dividend most likely. And it is a monthly dividend payer, and it is a weekly option stock. And the weekly option stock is why I own it. And between the two. I figure I can make more money than they could take away from me. At least that's the plan, I hope to. Regions Financial, this is a monthly option stock. I own one position at 1021, so I'm up on this stock. I'm up on most of my stocks um, since the downturn. Um, during the downturn, I sold off a bunch of stocks 
and I tried to get better stocks like Pfizer and and um, MetLife and AIG, Coca-Cola, companies like that. And um, and since then, I bought a few of these um, high-paying dividend stocks back, and I sell the obviously sell the premium. And this is a monthly premium on Regions Finance. This is a uh, bank stock. All in is a chemical company. Um, I'm a, I rebought into this. That's what happened. I owned this before, and I sold my uh, option. Um, I believe my strike price was met, and I just couldn't roll it over where it made sense without losing a lot of money or just dollar for dollar just didn't make a lot of sense. So I let it go. I knew it. Oh, what happened was they they named a new CEO, and it jumped up to like $13, and and it just didn't make sense for me to uh, to roll it over because I knew it would drop back down, and it did. And so you can see my average price, eleven dollars and twelve cents. I believe I own this here and in my Charles Schwab account, and it is a weekly option stock. Um, HPE. This is a new one for me. It is a weekly option stock. It's a different division of HP, and um, and I own one position. First Horizon National is an insurance stock. I own one position, and I'm up a little bit. And it is a monthly option stock. Uh, Plains All American PAA. I own two positions, I believe. I'm down a little bit. All the pipelines have been just dogs lately. Man, just dogs. They pay good dividends and stuff, but man. And they pay their dividends, which is nice. It's something I do appreciate the pipeline companies, the midstreams. They do pay their dividends. Um, I believe this is a weekly option stock. And I sell it, I believe, usually at two week periods. Um, Redwood Trust, monthly option stock. Um, this is another one Benji was not happy about. You can see it was up to $16, and now he's holding it at $7. And I bought it at $662. Hoping I can get a run up, and I can sell it. We collect those premiums and collect those dividends. It's a healthy dividend, I believe it's around 8 or 9%. Valley is a Valley National is a uh, financial stock, bank stock. Seven forty-five. I got it at. It's a monthly option stock. GE. I own a couple of positions of this. And it's a weekly option stock. I usually sell the bi-weekly or the two-week option, and it uh, does pay a little dividend, I believe. I don't know. I don't want to look at Charles. I don't want to look at Robert App. They ain't gonna tell me anything. ET. I don't own any positions of this. It's way down. I keep turning the dollar cost average down, so I kept buying more positions. And it, so it was going up there, but then it paid its. It was running up towards um, ex dividend date, got around 725. I just didn't think it was high enough for me to sell it. I do sell a weekly option on this usually. I usually don't get much because I really try to stay out of the strike price. And it's kind of hard to do when you're a six dollar fifty cent stock. You know, to stay out of the strike price because usually to make any money at all you have to sell the first deviation so i usually go to the second or i wait for it to have a really good day and then i sell the on that day i'll collect the five cent dividend which is fifty dollars a week um, which is you know i get to buy, buy more stocks and so i don't mind that um the et does pay its dividend and it ha does have a huge dividend coming in, in august i think i'm collecting a 450 dollar dividend or, uh, yeah, end of August. EVRI, oh my god, this stock. Okay, I bought it at five seventy five average price. Well, so look at this. Okay. Maybe that's a better view. So I bought it like last week? Well, you can tell it's up. That was two weeks ago. But the the premium, it's a weekly, or no, it's a monthly. The premiums are huge, literally, like almost a, like if you would sell the 750 for September 18th, which is about 35 days, it pays almost a dollar. Um, this is a gaming stock, I believe. Um, I have three positions of it, and I rolled it over already until December to the $10 mark, because it's got a lot of buy ratings on it, um, you know, it's a very, 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 uh, it's 
it's very very choppy as you know but with that comes you know it's a lot of dividend a lot of premiums and so i have three positions of it and i'm probably going to buy one in my charles schwab account as well and, and sell that 750 september um 18th strike price and collect that 95 dollars with lower my average cost down to around uh, six dollars and forty cents on that one pitney bows oh my goodness Oh my goodness, this is a prime example of why you don't want to be an option seller. Somebody wants to tell you why it makes no sense for you to sell options and you're losing money and all that. Well, I bought Pitney Bowes for $2.80 and it went literally, it felt like it was a day later. So let's see here. So I bought it somewhere probably about a week a day or two before it ran up i sold the three dollar pre option and then it went it's up three dollars and 86 cents so it doubled in price and here i own the three dollar option i think it's going to fall back down they saw at a government contract and uh, usually people just get all excited all excited all excited and then they level off and then they sell off they collect they say okay it's not going to run up anymore they take the run up and then they move on um Hopefully, I can roll my uh, option over next week and keep my stocks. If not, I will reinvest it somewhere else. And uh, Cleveland Cliffs is a weekly option of stock, and I have one position. And Geo Group is a new, it's a, uh, I believe it's a REIT. It is a monthly option stock. Nokia, I owned. My strike price was met. Um, it had a run up. Um, I made money, obviously. Collected the dividend, collected the premium, collected the up, the uh, actually they just spent their dividends. Collected the um, run up to my strike price. I'm looking for it to sell off. I just have one share right now. I'm looking for it to sell off back down to the 450 price, or close to it, and then I'm gonna buy some more and sell the premium and hopefully get a run up to my strike price. And um, this is a silver, first of majestic silver. It's a silver mining stock. I've owned this before. It pays really good premiums. I think it's a weekly too, which if it's a weekly stock and it's not a dog, and it's a weekly dividend stock, and it's not a dog, I want to own it. And and so you can see it's that's closed on Friday, which is a day, and a half, a day from now or so. So this is just... Um, for next week, so it'd be the twenty-first, and it uh, pays thirty-two cents for the twelve-dollar call. It's a, and that's not even close. It's eleven fifty-four. I mean, that's you know five five percent away. I'd probably sell the twelve fifty if I had a full share of this and and collect the nineteen cents. Maybe you could tell you I was eighty-two percent a max profit. I might sell the sell the twelve the thirteen dollar. That would be uh, ten percent away, and this stock really is uh, has a lot of premium. It's really choppy, um, but that's it. Those are the stocks I own Robinhood right now. I do have some puts on Pfizer and my Charles Schwab. Pfizer ran up on me. I rolled it a few times, and then I uh, and then I, I was waiting for it, and I sell some puts, try to get it back, and so that's where I'm at with Pfizer. But in the meantime, I'm collecting really good uh, premiums on it. All right, I hope that helps, guys. Again, if you find anything you could use here, any information you like, please like the video. Right, other than that, have a good day, guys. Appreciate it.